Let's talk about Sudea, also known as the Sea Princess, the Sahik in training, the daughter of the Metkayana clan leaders, and she also sometimes goes by Rhea. This 7 foot 2 inch 13 year old is probably the number one role model of the Metkayana. Remember how Sute was the epitome of everything an Omatikai warrior should be? Well, Sudea is the epitome of everything a Metkayana warrior should be. This is due to how good of a freediver she is, how good of a swimmer she is, how good of an overall person she is, and so on. And before we continue talking about the awesomeness of Sidea, the time has come where my video is finally sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Except this time, we're not talking about the game. Actually, we're still talking about the game, but it's a whole new thing added onto the game. We're talking about Raid Call of the Arbiter, the new limited series that is available on the game right now. You can watch the entire limited series on the game for free. Well, you soon will be able to watch the entire series because Call of the Arbiter is currently happening. You can watch episode one on the app right now, and every single episode is going to be premiering on Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Raid Shadow Legends is actually celebrating the release of this limited series by adding a bunch of new champion bios from characters featured in the show like Gallic, Athel, Kale, Elhane, and of course, everyone's favorite and my personal ray of sunshine, Death Knight. And guess what? Everyone has a chance to get an Artac. Artac being one of the five new characters from the show that was added to the game as a playable legendary champion that you can get for free. Just log into Raid for a collective of seven days anytime between now and July 24th, and you'll get your Artac. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click on the link in the description below or scan the QR code right here. Because once you do that, you're going to receive a free starter pack and a bunch of cool loot uh, that you can just do stuff with. Raid Shadow Legends, everybody. And Raid Call of the Arbiter. Go check out the limited series. Anyway, enough of that awesomeness. Now back Back onto the awesomeness that we know as Sidea. Sidea is the daughter of Renal and Tonawari, also known as the Sahik and Oluwaktan of the Mekaina clan. Like Neytiri, before she had to ditch the Yomatikai clan. So when Renal, the current Sahik or spiritual leader of the Mekaina, is done doing her thing, Sidea, her successor, is going to take over. And honestly, I have a feeling she's going to do an incredible job, but I'm going to elaborate more on that in a second. The official name for the Sahik in training is Sakram. Uh, I really hope I'm pronouncing announcing that right, the Sakram is basically a glorified assistant who is constantly shadowing the Sahik. Currently, Renal is teaching Sidea uh, how to listen for signs from Ewa, because in the words of Mawat, an Uluwaktan must wait to hear Ewa. A Sahik is always listening. Sidea is also learning a vast amount of history of the clan and her ancestors in order to better lead her clan spiritually. Some of Sidea's many responsibilities as the Sahik's assistant is assisting the Sahik with stuff like medicinal procedures. Like when Kiri had that not so positive experience of the spirit tree and Renal very politely uh, took over the treatment. Remove these things. It should have been Sirea assisting Renal instead of Tuk. But I think Tuk's close relationship with Kiri <laughs> is what led to Tuk assuming the role of Renal's assistant instead of Sirea. Sirea is also going to assist the Sahik in various rituals, like the first breast ceremony, where the newborn of the Navi is gracefully dropped into the ocean and then is guided back to the surface. And once they reach the surface, the newborn receives a prize, which would be three additional beads to their song cord. In Avatar The Way of Water, the visual dictionary, it's said that Sirea's song cord has a shell on it that's meant to represent her own first breast ceremony. Another responsibility of the Mekaina Sakram is to participate in these choreographed dance ceremonies, similar to stuff that we've seen from the Omitikaya. It would look something like this, except there would be like water in the background and um, and that kind of stuff. And the Navi that would be dancing would look slightly different because they evolved differently from their life on the water. Because as I mentioned in my overwhelmingly iconic Mekaina Explained video that I will never stop talking about till the day I die, the Oceanic Navi are built different. From the moment they're born, they're tossed into the ocean. So evolution granted Navi like Sirea with stuff like paddle-like tails to propel them through the water, strikes on their lower legs and forearms to make them more hydrodynamic, as well as nictitating membranes to help them maintain perfect vision underwater. When Aunung and Sirea were assigned the responsibility to uh, show the Sali children how to live on the reef, Sirea was the one to take the reins. Come. 
I will show you our village. Ruto? Uh, don't worry. You did also help the Sullys feel at home. Thank you. And can we just take a literal definition of a moment to talk about Ruto? I love this little exchange that he had with Nateam right here, where they just quietly laugh at Loa getting nervous about the girl he's into. Ruto may be friends with Aunung, but he wasn't there during the fight of Aunung and his friends versus Lawak and Nateam. For some reason, I was picturing him in Aunung's squad when they were all fighting, but he wasn't there. I don't know. I think Ruto is probably the most underappreciated character in Avatar so far. By this point in her life, Sireya is used to teaching younger Mekaina the reef people's sign language for underwater communication, how to swim properly, how to hold their breath underwater, and how to do that good old fashioned free diving. This is where she gains a lot of patience for new learners. Patience that Aunung is clearly lacking because he wasn't given as much responsibility as her. And Sireya does really have a lot of patience because if we look right here during the return ceremony, you can see that Navi kids are like just hanging out, swimming in the water, holding their breath like it's nothing. So even the youngest of the young of the Mekaina clan can hold their breath longer than someone like Lawak. All pointing towards the fact that Sireya is a really good teacher. Oh, I almost forgot. I was taught the same lesson that Sireya taught Lawak and the rest of the Sali children and the rest of her students and whoever else Sireya taught. Also, let me provide context. I was recently invited to a press adventure in breath holding, another event celebrating the digital release of Avatar The Way of Water. It was here that I got to spend the day hanging out with Kyla and Kirk Kroc, learning how to hold my breath like the Mekaina. And thanks to their teachings, I have a better grasp of what Sireya was teaching everyone during The Way of Water. And for those who don't, no, Kirk Kroc, marine unit and consultant for the film, helped teach actors like Sigourney Weaver and Kate Winslet the proper techniques that help them hold their breath underwater for long periods of time, so that they could do all their acting underwater. In fact, Kirk is the guy responsible for Kate Winslet learning how to hold her breath for like 7 minutes and 15 seconds. It was 7.15. <laughs> Which is so close to being the average length of time that a bottlenose dolphin can hold their breath. And Kyla Croc, daughter of Kirk Croc, is the stunt double for Trinity Bliss, aka Took. And on top of all of this, I got the chance to interview both Kyla and Kirk. By the way, uh, anytime I get a chance to interview a cast member or a crew member from Avatar The Way of Water, I'm going to ask the question of all questions. The most important question that anybody could ever ask. What is your favorite animal on Pandora. Favorite animal? Yes. What is your favorite animal? Well, I mean, I think PyCon's pretty awesome. No! Right. I mean, here's the relationship to whales that we have on Earth. And to know that they're this highly intelligent creature that understands art and philosophy and, and all these things and has this interpersonal relationship with the Metakayin. And, and I thought that was super cool. The parallel of how they're being hunted as they are even today, you know, whales. So yeah, PyCon's pretty awesome. Great. Now that we got that out of the way, some of you may be asking the question, why? Not like the existential why, but more like why do free diving when you could use scuba tanks or these really complicated wire setups that they used in the first avatar to simulate water when Jake was flowing down that river? Well, in my interview with Kirk and Kyla, I was able to ask this very question. Because, I mean, the water is ostensibly the the avatar, the way of water, and some of the main characters in it were the Metakai, who were free divers. They're an adapted form of the Navi who live on Pandora. They're born in the water, they spend their life free diving as their means of moving and harvesting and just living their lives. And so that was one of the main reasons why Kyle and I got brought in to work with uh, the, the adults and, and the kids. And then there was a component of the digital capture with the dotted suits that we couldn't have bubbles in the water because it messed up the computers. So we even went so far as to train the stunt team and the camera crews and grip divers and, and that. And despite what you hear from other people, it is not the same when it's done with wires and there's people flying around you can tell in movies when you watch them you see like that the hair isn't moving right this isn't moving right it's because they're doing it on wires and it just doesn't feel the same yeah and james cameron was actually pitched doing it on wires and he said no he didn't want it like that he wanted it to be authentic so the production ended up constructing this 90 foot long and 8.5 meter deep water tank yes i know i'm mixing meters with feet because i want chaos this is where the cast and crew were doing their free diving so that they could capture the underwater performances obviously don't attempt to do this breath holding
thing on your own after watching this video. Even though it is incredibly informative, what with my three plus hours of experience, you should definitely learn it from someone else who isn't me and someone who knows what they're actually doing. I'm simply giving you this information so you have a better picture of what Sireo was teaching the Sullies and what the actors went through on set. But if you do finish the video and you're like, hey, free diving sounds pretty rad. I did put some informative links in the description below, so. Before we put our heads underwater, we did these breathing exercises that focused on diaphragmatic breathing. The diaphragm being like located right here, right at the bottom of the rib cage. That's why when Sireo was teaching the walk, she said, breathe from down here. This stretches the lungs and rib cage and overall strengthens the diaphragm. Honestly, it was like the most controlled breathing I think I've ever done in my entire life. The goal was to relax the body and mind and slow down that heartbeat. You must slow down your heartbeat. Over Overall, inducing the mammalian diving reflex, giving you the ability to fully utilize your 5 liter lung capacity. To give you a better example of what we were doing, we focused on this cycle of breathing that incorporated multiple breathing techniques. One of those breathing techniques was breathing in through the diaphragm, like and then we'd hold, and then hold, and then we'd exhale for 10 seconds, going 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, and you get the point. We'd repeat this for like minutes at a time. It was a calm, slow process, and when you were breathing out, you breathe out slowly. The best advice you can give is what Sireo was teaching the Sullies, saying that you're flickering the flame. Imagine flickering the flame. Not blowing out the flame in front of you like a bunch of birthday candles. So not like this, more like this. All of this is referred to as the breathe up time. Before we went into the water, we all partnered up with a buddy and then we were instructed on the proper safety measures before we started doing the exercise. Then we hopped in the water and began. We were set up to hold our breath the same way that Kate Winslet did in that video that you and I were just watching like 10 seconds ago. The final part of the breathe up time right before you go underwater consisted of you breathing in through your diaphragm and then the chest and then the shoulders. So you'd go, <laughs> and then you'd go under. And you can see Lewak doing that right here, breathing in through the diaphragm and then the chest and then the shoulders, and then and then he goes under. The breathe up time was extended the longer that we were gonna be holding our breath underwater. And when they were filming the wave water, the breathe up time would depend on what kind of scene they were filming. Sometimes it would depend on the scene, right? What it was kind of the action in the scene, was it relaxed or was it very active and moving? So that would dictate how long we'd breathe up or maybe the type of oxygen mixture we would breathe, a 50 or an 80%. Yeah, so that would really kind of dictate it, kind of the action of the scene or how long the scene was just simply going to play out. And turns out the action of the scene, whether they're just swimming or fighting, plays a huge role in determining how long the cast and crew are going to be staying underwater. What is it like when you're like moving through the water holding oh, your breath yeah, like well, this? Well, I mean, that's, yeah, it's a lot harder because your metabolic rate is so high. Your functional time of being able to do something is, is short and can be like less than half, you know, so you're doing more takes or our prep for that scene, our breathe up would be longer. We, we'd use 80%. And then, you you know, we're in goggles and nose clips and, you know, we're running around this metal kind of stage and you're fighting and then sometimes your your goggle gets half moved out of the way and you're half flying and you're supposed to throw punches and you're landing punches that you didn't intend to land <laughs> or you're missing and you're punching metal. So, you know, at the end of it, that was a pretty rough week when you looked at how bruised and cut and <laughs> right you were. I got curious and I wanted to ask Kirk, what was the longest the cast and crew had to stay underwater when filming an actual scene for the movie. So we did one that was actually a barely involved metabolic scene. I mean, it wasn't like full out running, let's say, but it was like, you know, a brisk walk equivalent. And that was four and a half minutes. And that was taking us down to the deep end of the sump, which was, you know, about 30 feet deep. So by the time we'd get down there, we'd get set up and then the actors would get down and then we'd have to move in and they'd do their scene. And then sometimes we'd have to like reshoot it but not come back to the surface we're already down there just pull them back into spot reshoot again you know kurt's a little higher a little to the left and action and you know do the second take of it and then by the time they swim and get out of the way and we're still down there trying not to get into the scene so some of our stuff was like four and a half minutes long and longer after doing this exercise that is just more and more wild to me well it's good that you went through this experience to have an appreciation yeah. of you know what it takes to be a free diver in the way of water to be the 
actor, you know, this wasn't your specialty. You're being taught this and now you're trying to do that with the free diving being the background of the skill you have to use. Yeah. But now you got to bring your character to life and act your character, right? All while doing it on breath hold in the water. You can see actors like Kate Winslet wearing these like nose clips right here. It wasn't until I was doing the breath holding underwater that I realized just like how important those clips were from preventing water from like going up your nose. When I was underwater doing the breath holding, it was a really calm and meditative experience. Me and my buddy actually had the same experience. When we were underwater exceeding like two minutes of holding our breath, it didn't feel like that. It felt like 20 or 30 seconds. At the end of the day, I was able to hold my breath for around like two minutes and 30 seconds, which is pretty rad. According to this one interview with Hollywood Life, Bailey Bass, who plays Sirea, can hold her breath for like six minutes and 30 seconds. In the same interview with Bailey Bass, she mentioned that she was not a good swimmer before taking on the role of Sirea. In fact, she needed a good amount of practice before her audition, which would incorporate, you know, swimming in water. And now Bailey's someone who loves going far out into the ocean and just like treading water. I was curious how Kirk helped teach someone like Bailey how to become more comfortable with moving and navigating through the water so she could give the performance of someone who is Metkaina and someone who spent their entire life in the ocean. Trying to take 50 years of in-water experience and give it to maybe Bailey, who's part of the Metkaina, and she's supposed to have lived in the water, but maybe some of the cast didn't have that experience that I did. So that was a lot of our training is not just the procedures of how to hold our breath and how to work with doing the capture and that sort of thing. But what would James Cameron want to see in that character yeah. coming out? Like, what are the moves? What are the nuances that he would say, yeah, that's what we're looking for. And so a lot of the times training, it was training the breath hold, training the protocols, but also training different movements and actions that are fun, that are playful, that a kid might do in their day to day, yeah. or that an adult might do harvesting or doing the work of daily living on the water so it was a lot of fun to be creative about it. Whenever Sidea is teaching everyone how to hold their breath underwater with the techniques that we just learned about or other stuff like instructing Tuk on how to use a gill mantle, you can see how she's really excited to share her culture and way of life with the outsiders. But none of Sidea's lesson plans that day applied to someone like Kiri as it appeared that Kiri innately knew how to hold her breath underwater and required no prior teachings from someone like Sidea or Kirk or Kyla. From day one, Kitty just went off and did her own thing. I feel like Sirea has a really good understanding of the way of water and the world around her, so she could easily come to the conclusion that Kiri, the girl who went through no training to ride in Ikran or Pale or Ilu, could take care of herself. Which is why Sirea and Kiri aren't really seen together during the training montages, but I mean Kiri was still needing to do some more training, like right here when she's working through the breathing cycles. I know we were talking about Uto and uh, how he was very underrated, like 30 seconds seconds ago, so this segue is not gonna land as gracefully as I would have hoped. But speaking of underrated things, let's talk about costume design, because I freaking love the costume design of Avatar The Way of Water. One of my personal favorite things about the Mechainas costume design is how everything has to be secure when swimming fast or riding something like an elu or a skimwing, because the average speed of an elu is like 32 knots, and the average speed of a skimwing is around 50 knots, and the average wingspan of a skimwing is a little over 14 meters. That has absolutely nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I just want to make it known that the lead creature designer of Avatar The Way of Water, Zachary Berger, has supplied us with that information. Anyway, all of the clothing and accessories that the Mechaina are wearing have to be streamlined, making it easier to go in the water with. Take one of Sidea's armbands, for example. Each shell has to be inserted into the band, where the seagrass wraps fully around each shell. According to Avatar The Way of Water, the visual dictionary, Sidea has this necklace called the Carved Shell Necklace, which is a pretty fitting name for the necklace as it's lined with carved shells woven together with naturally occurring fibers from the beach. Sirea has this small shell headpiece with a band woven together by seagrass and a different headpiece with a much larger shell and a strap woven together with grass fronds. But grass aside, Sirea wears this smaller shell in front of her forehead or this larger shell positioned above her forehead as it's symbolic of her apprenticeship. Her mother, Renal, rocks the traditional Sahik shell, and this particular shell is is placed dead center on the front of her forehead right here. Going back to her song chord, 
it. Like most sahiks or sakrams, the majority of Sireya's objects on her song cord are there to represent most of the members of her clan. Because of her leadership role, Sireya is known to keep her blade in perfect condition, as she uses it to hunt food and collect food so she can give that food to other members in her clan. In the visual dictionary, it's said that the better condition this blade is in, the healthier her clan is going to be. By the way, Sireya's blade is made from sea glass, and like every other blade amongst the Mekaina, it has an intricately woven hand grip. Like, honestly, look at that weaving job. When it comes to weaving, the Mekaina know what's up. Sireya doesn't have any tattoos like her parents or her adult Tukun brothers and sisters because she's not yet considered a warrior amongst the Mekaina. We didn't really see Sireya interact with her parents a lot during Avatar The Way of Water. In fact, they completely disappear during the last half of that final battle. You know, the battle where Sireya was taken hostage by the humans. However, Tonawari and Renal are not neglectful parents. They didn't just stop halfway through the fight and were like, you know what? I'm good. I'm just gonna go home and watch Bryce's really sick Mekaina explain video. <laughs> James Cameron later went on to explain why Renal and Tonawari and the rest of the Mekaina warriors sort of fell off the face of the moon during that final confrontation. In an interview with the Direct, Cameron went on to say that they already shot the scene of Tonawari and Renal reuniting with Sireya, but they decided that it was a bit distracting to the core family, also known as the Sully family, stating that there are people who are bothered by it and people who don't even notice it. So it's just one of those things. You never get a perfect score on a movie. And then later reiterating that the parents were there, and they were accounted for, but they just felt like they had to narrow the spotlight. And that maybe it wasn't such a great decision, but it was the decision that they made at that moment. The person that we see Sireya actually spending the most time with would be Lawak. Sireya took Lawak under her wing. She helped Lawak understand the ocean, and grow accustomed to the ways of the Mekaina, the same way that Neytiri taught Jake how to adapt to the forest, and the ways of the Omitikaya. Which makes sense, because Lawak Walk is basically just Jake. He literally is his father's son. Even though Sireya freaked the freak out when the walk was uh, hanging out with Pyacon, Pyacon, she still trusted him. Well, he was being ignored by anyone and everyone at that point, and she truly saw him. I which is why she let Lawak make the bond with the outcast that we know as Pyakon, giving him the ability to become brother of Tulkun, making him more Mekaina than anyone else in his family. Thanks to Sireya and her breath-holding techniques that she taught Lawak, Lawak could teach his father the same techniques. So thanks to Sireya, uh, Jake Sully is still living. Even though Sireya and Neteum didn't really spend a lot of bond time together, she considered the Sully's Mekaina before someone like her father did. So Neteum was part of her clan when he passed, which is why she deeply mourned over the loss of him. I mean, everyone else like Ruto was mourning, but being the Sahik, she's going to be carrying more weight than anyone else. I mean, just look at her song chord. In Sireya's mind, it's not about her, it's about her clan. But the second most sad thing about this movie is that we still don't know the name of Sireya's spirit sister. However, we do know that the uh, spirit sister is filled in on the whole low walk situation, as well as the fact that the two of them like dancing together, and that would be it. That would be everything that I know about those two. In the spirit of Sireya and her love for the oceans, I wanted to ask Kirk and Kyla, who, you know, two people who spend basically their entire lives in the water, why the conservation of our oceans is important to them. When you look at the oceans, it's 70% of the surface of the, the world. It's the lifeblood of the planet for us. It's our main driver of weather. Our nutrients come from it. We are 70 to 80% water. It's integral in our day-to-day -day living and in our health of the planet. and end of humans, so we have to take care of it. It's really important, and when you consider that 70% uh, of the world's protein of people that use it comes from the oceans, and it's exploited to such uh, an extent that we risk putting it out of balance more than it is now to irreversible levels. And it is our lifeblood. It's what keeps us alive. If we didn't have an ocean, we wouldn't be here because we rely on it so much, yet we kill it so much too. The Way of Water is a celebration of Pandora's oceans as much as it's like a celebration of our own oceans. And as someone who is totes more interested in freediving to the point where I, I really just went out of my way to show off my diver's watch to Kirk for some reason, I'd imagine that more people like me developed a love for the sea. So I wanted to ask Kirk and Kyla if that was something they wanted to see after oh. people were watching the Way of Water. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as being divers and freedivers, we really wanted the freedivers in the audience Audience to like connect with it but we also wanted the non-divers in the audience to connect with it and to have an appreciation for it and maybe want to get into diving as a way to learn more and explore more about it right so it's great that 
that's you know what it's done for you that's that's perfect you know job done as long as it helps some people look at the ocean and see that we need to do something then it's done its job sponsorships totes help this channel keep going and another way that you personally can help this channel sustain itself and prevent itself from crashing and burning like home tree is by becoming a channel member so i just want to quickly shout out my newest channel member theophilus thank you theo for helping prevent the fall of bryce edward brown anyway that's everything i had to say about sidea so uh thanks for watching Thank mm -hmm. you.